Future enough to think a brother gonna get a fair chance in this college football world. Don't don't even begin to believe I'm foolish enough to believe that. But I, I am also the person who's gonna hold his feet to the fire. This man has a tremendous amount of talent because y'all thought he was gonna do better this year. You didn't. Now all of a sudden y'all big up in Maryland. When the last time anybody big up in Maryland football? When Boomer Sison was there? When Frank Wright was there, who came ten years after Boomer Sison? No nah, man, it don't work like that. Y'all gonna hold everybody, everybody accountable. Y'all gonna hold nobody accountable. See, this is the problem in America. We make excuses for the things that we like, and we and we diss the things that we don't. Now, the thing that bothers me, and that's one of the things that bothers me about that, because I, I just it just annoys the hell out of me. And please cut it out. Now, with that being said, there are a couple of games on the docket today that I want you guys to pay attention to. The first game I want you to pay attention to is the number 15 Michigan State Spartans. Coach did doing an excellent job. Coach D'Antonio is excellent. He got he don't have the big time recruits that the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Michigan Wolverines have, but he's making do. Mike D'Antonio is going against one of our favorites here on the uh, end of the bench, the homie Herm Edwards. Herm Edwards, in my opinion, is an astute basketball mind that isn't that no one in the history of sports has truly taken advantage of. Herm kicks ass wherever he goes. He had a bump in the road in Kansas City, but hey, it is what it is. But when he was with the Jets, he did his thing. When he was with uh, Tampa Bay, I think they won the Super Bowl. Herm is a respected guy. He was a defensive coordinator in Kansas City at one point, linebacker coach. Herm is well traveled. When people say Herm is out of touch with, they all uh, he was out of touch and he was this and he was that. He showed them last week just how tough, out of touch he was by kicking ass and taking names. And this week he's going up against the powerhouse, in my opinion, which is the Michigan State Spartans. My heart wants me to go with Herm Edwards. My head says the Michigan State Spartans is going to pull this one out. But guess what I'm doing? I'm going with my heart. I like Coach Herm Edwards. Herm Edwards. The one thing I like about him the most is his attention to detail. Look, one of the biggest things that we hear about in football today is head-to-head -to -head tackling and uh, leading with the crown of your head. And guess what? How Herm Edwards is combating that. Herm Edwards is combating that by teaching rugby-style tackling. If you don't know what rugby-style tackling is, it's leading with your shoulder, with your head going around a person's waist, that way you won't get hurt. Now, why is that important? For one, that means the players that are leaving Herm Apple's program to go to the big boys league, the NFL, that means as they are leaving, they will be less likely to get those penalties and get kicked out of the game. While you're in school, you won't get kicked out of the game for targeting because the University of Miami, even though they got flogged by LSU, they had one of their better players get kicked out of the game for targeting. See, when you start teaching early in the game, you don't have to worry about the issues that come about later on in the game. See, a lot of people are saying, we're going to have to get adjusted, we're going to have to get adjusted. Herm Edwards is adjusting on the fly. One second. I got something from Joe from Houston. I thought Herm Edwards had a twin that was young. I was like, man, this coach... Uh, <laughs> Like the coach for the Chiefs looks just like the coach of the Jets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Herm got about New York real quick. And before you knew it, he was working with uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, 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 yeah man. Herm, Herm the man. You know who else used to look like that? If you, you're a little young to know about this dude, look up Dan Reeves and Marty Schottenheimer, Joe. I remember them coaching against each other on the, you know, uh, the, uh, during the drive, the Cleveland Browns in 1986 versus the uh, 1986 uh, 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 Denver Broncos. Dan Reeves and Mighty Schoenheimer, I swear to God, they look like the same dude. But, like I said, uh, 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 Herm Edwards is preparing his young man. And see, in my opinion, we'll get on that a little later. My opinion, that's the difference in being a good coach and a great coach. Good coaches tell you what to do. Great coaches prepare you for what's going to happen. And Herm, in my opinion, is preparing his kids for what's happening. Let's not act like it's not been a, a gang of big time ball players come out of Arizona State University. Most recently, Gronk, back in the day, Darren Woodson, and in the middle of Darren Woodson and Gronk, you had the homie T. Sizzle. 
Terrell Suggs. So, people, Herm is, in my opinion, is about to bring life back in this. I'm rolling with Herm just because it's my heart. I do believe Mike D'Antonio and the Michigan State Sparks will beat them, but I ain't rolling with that. I'm rolling with Coach Herm all the way. Two fingers, one word. I'll let your boy Big Herm Edwards. We're going to give Herm Edwards a big rounding, a round of applause, and uh, we're going we gonna to wish him the best. Another game that I'm keeping an eye on tonight, I want you to keep an eye on, is number 17, SC, versus number 10, Stanford. Now, number 10, Stanford, they are a, they, it's, it's for the, the Jocks versus the Nerds, allegedly. The University of Stanford is the Ivy League of the West Coast, and they are playing the uh, University of, of this not so affectionately known as the University of Spoiled Children, because most of the people who are the movie sh and shakers in Hollywood, they sit in their cheap kids, the USC, that's what they call, they're known as the University of Spoiled Children, USC. SC consistently has big time talent. They, ha they are on the rise, but this again is why I like football. S uh, Stanford may not have the talent that SC has, but they do have uh, uh, my man, Bryce Love, and, and I love that coach. The thing that y'all want you to keep an eye on is JT McDaniels. This dude is an awesome, awesome young quarterback. This is going to be a get on. People keep an eye on this game. And with that being said, I want you to keep an eye on this and understand that. Then I fair football, and I'm not, and, hey, anybody listen to the show more than once, you know my stance on professional football. This is not, hey man, don't watch them, man, do what I'm doing. I'm just hand, hand out information, man. If you like football, you'll enjoy college football. And I think this is where you get on, get, you get get down there. Now, with that being said, I'm going to hand out, before this segment is over, I'm going to hand out my national top team. As, you know, just like with the AP, Alabama is clearly the number one team in the nation. The number two team is the University of Georgia. I know y'all saying Clemson is this and Clemson is that. Clemson has an awesome defensive front four. They got they they are a football factory, but I just think with the uh, with uh, uh, the way the University of Georgia is playing, they got runners, they got throwers, they got tacklers, they got everything that you need. I'm gonna put Georgia. It's my number two team, and number three is the University of Clemson. Dabo Sweeney, one of the better coaches in uh, NCAA football, he prepares his players like I told you. Good coaches teach, tell you what to do. Uh, great coaches tell you what's coming. I would rather be, be prepared for what's coming because then you know how to tackle it. Now, the next team is Ohio State University. They're kicking ass and taking names. Of course, for no other reason because they annihilated their competition while uh, University of Wisconsin let them hang around. Now, Oklahoma University is number my, my number six simply because you can't deny them. The homie Murphy down there, he's a center fielder for the Oakland A's. He's a quarterback for the University of Oklahoma. Contrary to popular belief, I think this is his first and last year down there. It's over for him. University of Notre Dame is my number 17. Notre Dame, the way they pushed around the University of Michigan, punked them out last week. It was a wrap. Sorry. Notre Dame, I am not a fan but I am a fan of the way you're playing this year. My number 18 is the University of Auburn. Then really, you played the University of Washington last year. You beat them, but you didn't beat them soundly. You were at the crib. I think with a couple of more complete passes, you guys would have lost. That's why you guys dropped in my rankings. My number 19 is Stanford University. Bryce Love is getting it in. Much love to him. Hey, I like their coach. I like their program. They got it in last week. And the number 10 team in the nation, this is where I stop at, is the LSU Titans. Coach O. Ed Orgeron picked up the backup quarterback or the dude that wasn't going to start for the University of Ohio State University. Bought him down in the middle of the, uh, the middle of the offseason. Got him familiar with his teammates. Now, LSU is looking like LSU. They always have a boatload of talent. Their defense is down there mauling folks. If that quarterback can continue to look the way he looked last week, if that offensive line can continue to look the way they look, and they can continue putting folks clean 
flat out square on their ass. People worry about the LSU Tigers. They may be back. Coach O could could be in the midst of saving his job, and it's going to be a very, very, very interesting week or upcoming season when it comes to football in Louisiana, in the state of Louisiana. So those are my top ten. I'll let your boy in regards to that. Now it's time for me to step my game up and move to football. The reason I played to chill that long, it is professional football. The National Football League Week 1 started Thursday. Now, when you look at the National Football Week League and the week starting Thursday, what I'm going to do going forward is this. Every week, I'm going to have picks. And we're going to see what my per percentage is at the end of the year. We're going to keep track of these picks. I'm going to keep it up every week. I'm going to make these picks Wednesday. And we're going to keep track of them every week and see what I'm doing, you know, how, how well I'm doing. For the record, even though I'm a week late, I did pick the Philadelphia Eagles to win that game Thursday. We're going to talk about that right now. The reason I picked the Philadelphia Eagles is because Nick Foles is not a very good quarterback. He, he was playing against a dude who was, in my opinion, overrated. That dude is Matt Ryan. The Philadelphia Eagles have a loading, added Haloti Nada and Michael Bennett to the defensive line, to an already stout defensive line. They have defensive backs, and when you, they have uh, Jenkins as a great defensive back, and they have uh, 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 Jenkins as a DB, and, a, and an awesome pass rushing Graham and those other guys down there. This is a team that is primed to be one of the best teams in all of football for the next few years. The great thing about Philadelphia is this. The Philadelphia Eagles have a great mixture of uh, very good young players and seasoned veterans playing at not gigantic money, but they're playing at good enough money. And when you're playing with good enough money, you put yourself in a position to be good for a decent amount of time. Now, what they need to do is continue that trend and even go with the Patriot way. The Patriot way... People keep thinking it's this plan and this evil genius and plan. All the Patriots do is not overplay pairs. They give you what market value is. I told you guys this at the middle of last season, in the middle of last season, that the Patriot way is to create a middle class in sports. There has long not, there has been a, 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 a void of the middle class in sports. The Patriots will not overpay for, that, for, 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 for the talent that they need. And when you don't overpay for the talent that you need, you set yourself up to be successful on a regular basis. And that's all the Patriots have done. Bill Belichick is, again, he's one of those coaches I was just telling you about. He don't tell you what, how to do something. He tell you what's going to happen. You already are being taught how to execute. But when you know how to execute and you know what is about to happen, that makes you even a, even more formidable foe. And when you're a more formidable foe, you are uh, well prepared, you're well prepared, you'll get the job done. Another thing, the Patriots lead the NFL and college graduates. That means you are there to be taught. If you are acceptable of being instructed, you will more than likely be a successful football player. Again, you know what's coming, you know how to do it, and you're accepting of what is coming. This leads to a successful football team. The New England Patriots do exactly that. And that's where they're successful. Matt Ryan is overrated. And Steve Sarkeesian, in my opinion, is his uh, new offensive coordinator, is in over his head. People. Football is simple. It's run, throw, catch, block, read, react, tackle. That's all football is. When you are on the offense, it's hike, hit, block. Run, hike, block, read, throw. Catch, block, run on offense. Read, react, tackle. That That's all football is. 
you don't have to be some damn genius. You don't have to be in the lab doing all these magic tricks and wishing bad stuff on people. Football is.